This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, March the 31st, 2019. It's Laetare Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. The traditional collect for today begins Laetare Jerusalem et Conventum Facite, Omnes Que Diligitis Eam. Rejoice Jerusalem and gather all you who love her. It's traditionally the time for priests to wear rose-colored vestments. That's rose, not pink. It's the only Sunday of Lent in which flowers should be used to decorate the church, and it's meant to be a bit of rest before we go full speed into Passion Tide. Now remember that Lent used to be hard. Before the 1960s, Lent began with Septuagesima, three Sundays before Ash Wednesday. And that many season was Lent at Mass, but without the fasting, without anything outside of Mass. Then every day of Lent from Ash Wednesday to Good Friday was a day of fasting. Every day, no meat, one meal a day, the entire time. Each Sunday of Lent was a break from that. But by the time you got to the fourth Sunday, you had already had six Sundays of no Alleluia, no Gloria, somber music, tough preaching, and all the fasting. And the following two Sundays would be Passion Sunday with a super long gospel reading and all the statues being veiled. And then Palm Sunday, which began with about an hour of extra prayer and processions and chanting. And then came Holy Week. There was a real psychological need for an island in the midst of that real penance of Lent. In the modern church, Lent is really quite easy. No burgers on Fridays and you're good to go. And so in that context, Laetare Sunday might seem superfluous in some ways or shape or form, but it's still an incredibly good thing. It's a quirky and neat tradition. And so here's hoping that your priest wears rose, not pink, today. Well, today is the birthday in 1675 of Pope Benedict XIV. He was one of the great scholars of his era, full stop. He was a brilliant scientist. He was an artist, an expert in anatomy. He was a brilliant theologian, an expert on the writing of St. Thomas Aquinas. He was given a complicated series of problems after the Council of Trent, not the least of which was to repair the Roman breviary, which had been weirded up by some well-meaning Italian theologians. He was also a very competent king and landlord. He cut taxes on these things which made life easier for the poor while raising taxes on those things which improved the quality of life for all. He also built much of the modern Vatican museums. The English writer Horace Walpole wrote a book about him in which he sums it up this way. He was, quote, loved by papists, esteemed by Protestants, a priest without insolence or interest, a prince without favorites, a pope without nepotism, an author without vanity, a man whom neither intellect nor power could corrupt. He died in 1758 and is buried at St. Peter's beneath a brilliant and gorgeous tomb. It's also the birthday of Austrian composer Joseph Haydn, He's the father of the symphony and the father of the string quartet. He was also a friend and mentor to Mozart and a tutor to Beethoven. He was very much a classical period musician and an expert in chamber music. His violin concertos are restrained and masterful. We're not talking about Tchaikovsky or the chaos of Bizet. His great oratorios are deep and ponderous. Haydn was a man who had always worked quickly for pay and to be supportive of his family. And so the oratorios gave him real time to think and to consider. It was a rare blessing for a man of his time. Haydn died rich and happy and surrounded by family in 1809 at the ripe old age of 77. And good on him. Happy birthday, Joseph Haydn. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.